Today, Jorge and Crystal get a tap dance lesson from Sally Crawford, who studies the culture of tap in England. We just learned a few of the basic steps. By the end of the session, you'll be able to improvise, so when we get over to the jam tonight, three of us can get up on stage. We are PhD Comics. And we want to know why. Do I love tap? Yes, I do. Very much, thank you. <laughs> I absolutely love it. There's no better thing. It's the best way to make music and jam with other people, so. I enjoy tap dancing quite a lot, uh, quite experimental. When I go home and I write about my notes, is I try and recreate this in words. So I'm, I'm actually writing about who was here, kind of what they did, the atmosphere, and I'm trying to create a picture of who they are and why they're here, how they're so passionate about this dance form, learning how to perform this dance form differently than they might have when they were younger, learning how to be in a class. Ethnography is getting more of the human side, so it's not just crunching numbers, how many men were here, how many women, but it's finding out why. That's what's interesting. Okay, so, a couple of them have not tapped before, Ever. I understand. Ah. <laughs> That's the tap jam first. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jorge, we have Crystal. We're here in Covent Garden, Jorge and Crystal, and this is Sally. The reason that we're here in this Capizio store is that she studies ethnography of tap dancing. Sally, what do you look for in a tap shoe? What do you, where should we be looking for? Oh gosh, it's such a personal thing. Some people like the different kinds of taps. Um, some people like them quite loose because they're a little bit louder. Uh, you'll see a lot of tap dancers with little tiny screwdrivers, and that's what they carry them for to tighten or loosen the taps. Remember that tap dancers are also musicians. So it's about the sound as much as the movement. And you're actually missing a... I'm missing a screw. You've got a purpose. screw loose. I got a screw loose. Yeah. <laughs> Great, I just met you, Sally. Thank you for the quick, quick ethnographic assessment. Of my She's quick. <laughs> this would be great for professors, you know, just to emphasize the whole. <laughs> Let's get to the studio. We're here in Pineapple Studios and we've got our tap shoes on. Well, I thought what we'd do is we just learned a few of the basic steps. When you're tapping, you've only got four surfaces to work with, really. You've got two toes and two heels. Hopefully by the end of the session, you'll be able to improvise. So when we get over to the jam tonight, three of us can get up on stage and have a little go. Yes. You didn't tell me I was getting up on stage. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, it'll be fine, right, you'll be I, fine. I don't know if you know this, Sally, but Crystal not is not just a PhD student in chemistry, but she's also a former professional dancer. No. Modern dance. No. I've never danced in my life. You know the different elements? You're just putting them together in an order. That's what tap is, it's people coming together and doing just this, going actually, you know, we have that kind of combination, how could we change it? And that's really how the dance form started over in the States, back in, you know, some people say as early as the, before the 19th century, depending on who you ask. Is it's actually a mix, African slaves, Irish immigrants, some of the English immigrants, and it was coming together and it was built out of this exchange of rhythm is what it was built out of really. And the interesting thing about what I've been researching is that a lot of individuals in these communities don't have this background of improvising. They learned from what was called a syllabus. Mm -hmm. So they learned specific steps to specific songs and it wasn't until 2009 improvisation started appearing in these syllabuses, but these tap jams have been going on since 2006. You're studying an evolution of the art form that's happening now. Yes. Not an evolution that happened historically, but something that you can observe. Which is really difficult 
when it comes to the part I'm at now, the stage I'm at now, which is writing it up, because what do you use for reference? So this is part of my field work. I go to the jams, and I, as an ethnographer, you participate, you observe, you take in all the information. It wasn't unusual for me to come home with 15 pages of notes and analyze it and see that's where this is coming out, the improvisation of a lot of syllabus trained people are finding it hard to improvise. You know, why is that? And so drawing that out of the data. This is what you study, how people are learning to tap dance. Every fourth Sunday of the month I've got to come here and practice and just jam with a bunch of people who are just as appreciative and who enjoy tap dancing and, you know, freestyling. I did syllabus tap and then that stopped aged about 16. I basically, I ran out of the syllabus. Sometimes you can be quite restrained in structure. But then when you improvise, you find things that you actually wouldn't think about doing, but you do it because you fall into it. And if you remember it, it becomes a new step. So would you say tap dancing is kind of music first, dance later, or dance first, music later? I think it's both. You're generating sound as you move. How did you decide to do tap dancing for your PhD? My supervisor said, why don't you come to this dance conference? And I listened to a young man do one on trance music, and another woman was doing it on tango, and another woman was doing it on flamenco. So there's a whole field Absolutely. of dance. I had no idea. Yeah. Someone should have told me. <laughs> why am I doing chemistry? Why? <laughs> why? In the syllabus system, you know what's going to happen at the end of the session. You know you're going to progress onto this next level because that's what you've been told. When you're improvising, you don't know what you're going to get out of it. One member in the Manchester community said, a successful improvisation is when you are different when you go off stage than when you go on, that you've found something. Okay, so I'm a couple of them have not tapped before, I understand. <laughs> That's wow. a tap jam first. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bonnie, we have Crystal, I think improvisation is important. It allows you to express yourself freely. It allows you to actually uh, find new steps. So find yourself more, really. This is really an outlet for, for people to really improvise, try out new ideas, um, discover something about themselves. Survival. Yeah. Oh. We're going to cut all that.